Hi, I'm Andre. I'm gonna show you how to make this trebuchet. So let's see how it works. So I'm using E to manipulate the trebuchet, to arm it, to shoot and to release the projectile. So E to arm and I'll put this projectile there in E and E again. So as you can see it shoots and there's a pro new projectile that it spawned in its place. So we can do this again. E. Okay, so in order to for this to be more easy to understand and to follow, I'll um, include links to the uh, to the models that I use here in the video description. So let's see how we can implement this. So the trebuchet is made out of a base, an arm, and at one end of the arm there's a counterweight, and at the other end. Uh, and there's a rope and a projectile. So when the counterweight pulls the arm down, at the other end the arm is pulled up and so it pulls the projectile on this path and then it will release the projectile somewhere over here. So for this we're going to use two physics constraint of an axis type so they're just gonna let the objects rotate around and one that is gonna be free for the projectile that's gonna be free to move around and just have a limit here so let's go ahead and create an actor so we'll create first uh, the base the static mesh And we'll make this the default scene root. The base right here. And then we'll create the arm. Sorry, it's a static mesh actually. Like that, and we'll also create a um, physics constraint for the arm. So we'll call this arm axis. Okay, now we're gonna have to move these, and as you can see, I've I've also created the physics constraint so that they're in the same spot. So the arm has its uh, pivot here at the same location as the physics constraint so they are where they should be but we should move them up a little bit like that here so now they're in the right position now because the army is moving we're gonna have to simulate physics and in the physics constraint we're going to disable the collision between the two objects and we'll also have to link them together so the base and the arm now in the physics constraint for the linear limits we'll leave locked and the angular limits will lock everything and will unlock the rotation in the vertical plane around the y-axis so this one as you can see right here so this should be it for the first phase um, we can already try it out like this if we drag the actor in and we play if we grab this we'll see that it works as it should now we'll quickly look into the uh, collision now because this, this is uh, static, is not moving, you can use complex collision as simple. So you have the complex collision here and you ha should choose this, use complex collision as simple to use this one instead. This is only, this only works for the static objects. For the arm, like we have here, we need simple collision. And we, I have that already here, but you can do that 
by going to the collision, we'll just remove this one and go into the auto convex collision and click apply. And you can see it generated a really simple collision for us. So we'll save this. And now, so this is done. Let's go into the, let's create the counterweight. So we'll take a static mesh again, like that. actually here like that and because th as you can see here the uh, the pivot is exactly at the rotation center we uh, also are also going to create the physics constraint like that counterweight axis so now they're at the same uh, location and we can move them both where they should be so we'll move this up here like that now again because the counterweight is moving we have to simulate physics and here for the collision we're actually not gonna check disable collision and i'll show you why uh, but let's just first connect the two so we'll put here the arm and the counterweight yeah so just make sure that it's colored so you don't miss the spelling here okay and again, we'll lock everything and we'll unlock the same thing as before the rotation in the vertical plane. Okay, now I said that we're not gonna disable the collision and I'm gonna show you why. So if we go here and we pull this down, so it already works, you can see. Now, as you can see here, it actually collides with the arm. So this is how it should be. Because if we we would have gone ahead and disabled the collision, it would pass through the arm, which is not normal. And this is a thing that I did in the collision. As you can see right here, the counterweight is actually cut here. And if we look into the collision, the collision stops right here. So that it actually doesn't go through the arm. So it doesn't cause problem uh, <coughs> overlap problems when in the collision. So the same thing if you want to generate collision, generate with this one, just use probably more uh, holes so it, that it can uh, approximate it better here. <coughs> okay, so we got this down. Now we have to attach the, uh, the projectile. Let's go ahead and create the projectile, we'll create a static mesh for that. And the physics constraint. And we'll call this projectile rope. Okay. Now the projectile will simulate physics on this and the rope we're gonna link the the arm with the projectile so we'll put here arm and here projectile and the projectile actually should have a projectile mesh like this so as you can see i've put here the 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 pivot exactly at the top or it should be because it will grab the physics constraint will grab it from here and it will look natural but this is of course not okay because we have to move them up so we grab them right here so the projectile 
take the projectile and the physics constraint and we move them together. So I put them here. Like that. But just up. So now uh, they should work. Uh, but we have to set the physics constraint limits. Now, what we want for the projectile is as it's. Uh, let's consider that the rope is not uh, stretching. So, what the projectile has is actually a sphere of freedom around this point that is uh, actually moving itself. So, we actually we have and we have translation and rotation freedom so we'll free the translation and we're actually because it's a sphere we have to put it limited so the limit we have to put a limit here for let's say a hundred uh, that would be one meter and the rotation we actually leave them free because it can rotate however it wants now there is a small um, there's a small uh, force that is caused by the rope and that will probably not take into consideration but it's hard to do that but it should look natural nonetheless okay so let's try this out and we'll come back and make some uh, changes afterwards so as you can see it already works and it be behaves as it should now why do we have this weird movement and that's because uh, there's a discrepancy there's actually uh, weird masses put so the base we don't have to set the mass because the base is, since it's static it's considered as an infinite mass the arm so no these are the values that i've found to work best so you can put whatever values you want Okay, so the arm it's gonna be 50 kilos. The counterweight it's gonna be at 700 kilos. And the projectile will put that at 20 kilos. So now if you try this again, we should see a difference. As you can see now, it's more stabilized. And it does behave as it should. <coughs> now, uh, let's see about the length of the, of the rope. So, for the trebuchet, I've searched this online actually. There are some rules. Now, as you can see here, there's a part of the arm that holds the counterweight and the other that holds the projectile now the 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 part the part that holds the projectile should be 3.75 times the length uh, of the other that holds the counterweight so in this case i've actually made the mesh that has approximately one meter here and here it's 3.75 meters so we are uh, okay with the um, with the lengths now there's also another uh, rule that says that the rope has to has to be the same length as the uh, projectile arm part of the arm so in the physics constraint here we'll put uh, projectile rope will actually put here 375 this is going to be centimeters okay so that means that if we play this again like that as you can see the 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 projectile comes down to the axis of the arm and that looks okay now there's also, as you can see, there's um, the movement is a little bit too smooth. So and it stops. Um, it sto it doesn't stop fast as it should. 
in the real world because there is no friction so let's add some friction so for the arm uh, for the arm axis in order to add friction we go down to the angular motor select twist and swing here and we select swing then and we'll put this to five so this will add a force that will try to to keep this at the zero rotation velocity as you can see it's here it's zero so that means it, it will dampen the rotation <coughs> and we'll do the same thing for the <coughs> sorry for the counterweight like this i will just leave this to one and also the projectile for the projectile will actually want to do also the rotation so this will add will actually fake a little bit of interaction with the rope when the counterweight is rotating and when the projectile is rotating so let's put this to five we'll test this out see how it goes <coughs> like that so as you can see now it stabilizes a lot faster okay so you pull this down let it go you can already see that it it wants to launch okay now for the visual representation of the rope we're actually going to use the cable component because there is no because the cable component cannot act with forces on other objects we'll just use it for visualization so we'll put this here and we'll link it to the projectile okay so in the arm we'll, here we're gonna add the cable like that and we'll leave that to cable because otherwise it's gonna be confusing with the rope okay so now the cable here the uh, uh, we're gonna move this up actually so it's exactly at the the location like that <laughs> so here we'll link it to the projectile so we we'll write projectile uh, and this should work well first we have to get this to zero like that so we attach and projectile like that cable length so cable length should uh, also be 375 centimeters because it should be from here to here okay and let's see the solver iteration actually helps us with the stiffness of the cable so we'll put this to 10 so it's more stiff but why do we have this here? Uh, so wait, attach and two. Yes, because we put this name into the socket instead of putting it into the component property. Okay, so. That should work. Let's try it out. Yeah, so as you can see it does work and it kind of simulates it. it 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 it's like there would be rope there and the rope is actually pulling the weight but it does it does wobble a little bit well you can you can play around with the iterations and that should uh, yeah should maybe at 15 if you try this out let's see it's already better but you can um, change the properties here for the cable is because it's just a visual representation it's not that important okay so we have this now what we're trying to do is we'll have to launch it so i have to pull this down like that 
and then launch it and we'll have to actually cut the rope here so first let's try to well, let's try let's see if we can uh, uh, if we can cut the rope okay so what we'll do is we'll use a function that I've uh, done in the player character so if you look here I've also used this in the catapult video so but I, I didn't show it back then so I'll show it now so in the, the event graph right here use functionality so we if we press E then what we'll do here is uh, make a trace so we'll trace for object from the camera so in the center of the camera where we're looking for 10 meters and we say if we uh, find any objects then we'll uh, cast them to the to an interface that I made uh, an interface called use and we'll call that uh, the use function in the interface so if you look here in the interface so it's just I use interface with just one function that doesn't doesn't have any inputs or outputs it just called this function and that's it so if we go into if we go into our uh, trebuchet right here uh, if we go into our class settings then we can add the interface here so use like that we implement the interface so first we have to compile in order to see the changes and then we can add the event use like that so each time uh, the player looks at this and and pushes e then this function will get called <coughs> so let's release the uh, the projectile so how we're gonna do this is first we have to so we're gonna have to break the physics constraint this one that is holds that holds it and then we'll also have to detach the cable and then we're we'll also have gonna have to uh, detach the projectile from its parent so that it's uh, it's free um, it, it doesn't it's yeah it detaches from it okay so let's see the projectile so we take the rope and we'll just call break constraint like this okay now after that we take the cable and for the cable is more complicated with actually not more compli complicated but we we'll have to set a property so set attach end so we'll leave this unchecked so that means the attach end it's not gonna function anymore so and then we have to let's detach it also so projectile and we'll say detach from component like this and we'll say keep world so that means its world location will be kept as it is <coughs> so let's try this so you go here and we'll, we'll just pull it down we're just gonna pull it down like this manually and then we'll let's see so E so as you can see let it go and it detaches the cable stays uh, dangling like that it's still attached so it's at it as it should normally now as you can see the cable moves around and it will move around a lot if we let it just like that so what we'll do is actually will um, enable the collision for the the cable so take the cable like that and we'll say enable collision mm, that's not okay actually because we need the collision of the cable actually so it's a special one set collision 
enable collision this one and we check it because what we're actually enabling is this one we didn't enable it before because what when the world if the weight uh, if the projectile goes around the base for example it will tangle the rope so it's just more easy to leave it like that but you can enable it before if you want so now it's not enabled as you can see if i pull the projectile it just goes through but as you'll see okay so let's pull this down easy like that and i'll push e like that very nice and as you can see now the rope actually collides with the arm and it will stop pretty fast so it acts more normally than just going around the arm like that so that's a nice thing to have okay so we have that now what we can do is well let's <clears throat> let's uh, implement this pull arm that will actually pull this down and um, then let it go okay so let's add the arm first so in here we'll add a static mesh so we call this pull arm like that okay and we're gonna move this up where it should be like that and we'll just rotate it so that it's not colliding with the arm like that so now since we have it in place then we can use it so let's see how we can do this so we're gonna have to implement some kind of states for the object we'll just remove this so let's say that we're gonna have the states like this armed arming and firing and I'll explain how these work so first let's say let's forget about this part with the launching uh, and let's say that we just want to arm it so first <coughs> we're gonna branch from here <coughs> okay and say from armed we get armed like that so if it's armed then we're gonna fire if not then we're gonna arm it so how do we arm it first well we're gonna rotate this like that <coughs> sorry 220 degrees let's say okay so we'll take the pull arm from here and we'll say move component to this will move it over time so we'll say here one second like this or even more let's say two to be slower okay so we're gonna move this because we don't want its location to change we're gonna say get relative location like this we'll get its current location and we'll plug it in for the location so this won't change but the rotation will change and as we can see if we rotate here we're gonna see that it's uh it's gonna be more actually for uh, um 80 degrees yes 80 degrees like that so we're actually setting it here it's relative rotation so we'll put uh we'll put more 100 let's say like that and yeah so it will slowly move to that location actually not that slow but 
Okay, and then we'll say, okay, it's armed. Set like this. So it's armed. So let's, I think we can try this. And we also have force uh, shorter rotation, otherwise it will rotate the other way. And it's nice to use ease and is in and it's out, so it smooths out the movement, the beginning and the at the end. So let's push E. So push it down slowly. I think we can go faster. So so the projectile doesn't get stuck up there. Like this. So yeah. Again like this. Okay, now, uh, because, <clears throat> yeah, what we can do here is actually, yeah, so it's armed. Let's, if it's armed, then we can fire it. So how, how can we fire it? We just put it back here. So if you look here, it's minus 40 degrees in rotation like this. So we'll say we'll move to minus 40, like that. We'll move it faster, let's say 0 0.5. And we'll take this again because its location is not going to uh, change. Okay. <clears throat> so then, uh, but we'll also say, <clears throat> well, let's try this out. Okay. So let's take it easy, step by step. So we'll arm it and then we'll fire it like that. Okay, very nice. Now, uh, <clears throat> we're going to have to also release it uh, with this. Because this is not plugged yet. We had it before, but we removed it. Now, we're going to say, okay, when we fire, it's going to wait two seconds for us to make to give the release command so from here then it's gonna wait well let's say three seconds so it's gonna wait for us three seconds before it uh, takes again the command to arm the, the the trebuchet and there is one problem yes we have to disable arm so armed set like that because it didn't work now we're gonna say here because uh, we're gonna add a delay delay like that and we're also we're gonna use the firing uh, flag so let's say we are firing Uh, actually, this is before, yes. So plug this in before. Why? Because uh, we don't actually have to wait for the movement of the arm. It, it, just as it moves, we can release it. So we we'll say f when it's armed, we're going to start firing and we'll move the arm. And then we'll wait for the release command. And then we we'll say... We finished firing. Uh, sorry, like that. And this, okay. And then it will disable the armed because it's not armed anymore because we fired. And here, before checking the armed <coughs> say state, we're going to check the firing state. Okay. So we'll branch again here. Like that. So we'll plug in the firing and then <coughs> we'll say, well, it's actually the other way around. So when we're not firing, check if we're armed. So when we are firing, then we can release it. Okay, so again, so it's in a normal state now. It's not armed, it's not firing. If we come here, push E, then it's it's not firing and we go forward and we check armed it's not armed so we go ahead and arm it and when it's armed next time we push it 
then it's gonna go here and it's gonna fire start firing okay so in this interval the firing is gonna be uh, true so in that interval if we push again this is gonna come here and then we're gonna release it okay so let's try that like that not sure what happened there okay so put this where it should be so e and e again so yes as you can see it didn't do what it should do because it armed again okay so this is so well, yes because the duration that we waited is too small so this finished and we actually missed our window to release because it was just in two seconds so let's try again with three seconds now so we'll push e i'll put this here like that we'll push e and e again so as you can see fires nicely so no problem there okay now so this is working fine now we're gonna what we're gonna do is we have to reload it so what we're gonna do is we can see here for the other one i'm gonna pull this and push e and e again and after at the end of the three seconds it adds another uh, projectile so this is exactly what we're gonna do so we're gonna do this here so before saying that we stopped firing and everything we're gonna spawn another projectile now for that I'm gonna use add static mesh component like this because our projectile is a static mesh component we're just gonna add one like that and now the stat now the relative transform is gonna be tricky I'm gonna show you why so this uh, first you'd say you know you just put it anywhere but it's not that simple but first let's I'll show you why uh, but first so to this we're gonna have to set its um, static mesh like that I'll put this to projectile like that and we're gonna have to also so let's pull this down like this so it's more clear uh, like that we'll also have to set the collision set object type so we'll set this to physics body because by default it's not set to physics body okay and we just leave this yes we also have to enable physics so enable physics uh, no physics simulation set physics set simulate physics like that yes So we'll check this so what we've done here actually so if you look here into the projectile we've set this we've set this with the, this one and here we've set physics actor okay so now let's see what it gives us so let's plug this in like that so we'll just see we're just gonna spawn yeah 
So as you can see, it's pointed here. It just stays there, it doesn't move. We can grab it. So it's like a normal physics object, but it's not connected. So let's connect it. Now, here comes the tricky part. Here, as you can see right here, if you go into the uh, viewport, we can see that our projectile and our projectile rope, they are actually in the same location. So we're going to have to do the same thing if we want this to, to uh, work like it should. Because what it happens is that the, the limits that we put here in the physics constraint of the projectile actually function, this limit actually functions uh, considering the first position uh, between when we link the physics constraint uh, to the two objects. So if we move this like that, uh, either the physics constraint or the projectile, it's not gonna, it's gonna shift and it's gonna add more to this limit. So maybe I'll do a video um, on this because it's really complicated to, to, to explain but you should keep them in the same spot so what we're gonna do is the projectile we're gonna um, set it exactly in the location of the physics constraint of the projectile so how do we do that now the relative transform location right here this is how we do it but because, uh, so let's see, we have, so we have the arm, this one, so we're, the arm can be however it likes, you know, it could be like that, for example. So what we have to do is take its local coordinates, and as you can see here, this point right here is on its z-axis. Because if we rotate it like that, uh, sorry, if we rotate it like this, it's on the Z axis. Look, it's on the Z axis. So we're gonna have to put it on the Z axis at this height of the arm and then transform that location in the relative location of the actor. So let's see. So we'll take the we'll take the the arm. <coughs> now here, what you would probably think, you know, is like get relative transform, and you would use that. But I don't know why this. It's actually the world transform. I'm not sure why, but because it's parented to this, it should be relative. But I don't know. It actually outputs the world or key, uh, world transform so what i prefer to do is uh, because i don't want this to be buggy in some way i'm actually using the world transform so i get the world transform like that so and we'll uh and this so this is component to world so i'll, I'll transform the location <coughs> so we'll just Leave, if we leave it like that, it will take the location here because as we can see the pivot is here. So we'll take this location. Okay. And so now this <coughs> is uh, sorry, this is this location but in world. So if we wanted to translate it to relative, so that means in the actor. We're gonna have to get the actor transform like that. And if we look here, the actor transform is actor to world. So we're gonna have to do the inverse transfer. Okay, location. Because we're tr transforming from world to actor. Because this is world. Okay, so this should go here. Now, what do we put here? Well, the Z said that the local the local uh, coordinates where we want to put it is right here. So let's see. So let's look because if this is relative, we'll have to uh, 
uh, subtract. So this is 870. And if you go here, well, actually, you know what? It's just this one, 870 minus the location of this one, because we, it's here, the pivot of the arm. So minus 520. So that means 300 and um, 50. So from this position, we'll shift it 350. So when, because we made the transform, when it's going to be like that, it's going to shift it here, and then it's transforming to the relative position uh, well, of the actor. So we'll say here 350, like that. And now it should be at the location of the tip of the arm. So let's see again. I told you this was tricky. So it should be something like here if we if we managed. To, okay, so it should be here. And it kind of is, but if yeah, so uh, let's just let's just link this. So this is okay but we have to link it sorry this starts to be a big i'll just move this a little bit let's move the delay also okay So we'll just link this with the physics constraint. So let's see. Let's just link it and we'll see afterwards what happens because there is a small problem, but we'll fix it. So we'll take the projectile rope right here, the physics constraint of the projectile, and we'll say set component. Was it set constraint components? This one. Okay, and the first component is the arm, like that. And second component, we'll make this tidy, like that, is actually the, the new projectile. Okay, now let's see if this worked. Okay, we'll worry about the cable later. So again. So it does work. Okay. Now, as you can see, there is a problem. It stays like that. If you pull it here, actually, what you'll see is well, it will go down further. And that's... It's weird. Why would it do that? Now the problem is, it's it was tricky to find this one, so we did put it where we should here in the tip of the arm. But the problem is that the projectile rope, this one, the physics constraint, actually, because it's parented to the base, it didn't move with the arm, so it stayed there. So that means that if we had the arm right here, like that, and we put it, we put the projectile here, but the physics constraint is here. So that means it added this distance to the freedom that we put here. And again, that's very complicated to, to explain, but the idea is that uh, what we should have done is actually parent the, the physics constraint to the arm. So now when the arm moves, it actually moves, uh, the physics constraint moved with the arm. So it stays in the same location. So we would have the same thing here, just rotated. So, but they are, end up in the same place. So let's try again. So like that, release it, okay. 
so now so now it it should work so as you can see it's the same uh, length here and when we take it to the other side it looks good the only problem is that if you look closer it's heavier actually because we didn't set its mass so again when we create this new component it's gonna be like a new component so we have to set everything up again but what I would say is that so let's, we'll put here like this set mass override in kilograms this one okay Um, if you want so I'll just put this manually like that but what you could do is actually take the projectile from here and say get mass like that uh, which actually I can do yeah so what you should do is actually take from this projectile all the properties that you want it to retain and it will be identical with the first one and this is why it's actually better to keep this projectile at the beginning and not spawn because you could spawn here one but keep this one because it's easier to change from here and just copy the properties here okay so if we try this again we should see a difference in the mass but okay so let's see where we detach this so Yes, we detached it from here. It might be a problem that we detached it before, but we'll see. Okay. So now the last thing to do is actually connect the cable. So let's see. So for the cable, we're going to set attach end. And we'll check it. Okay. We'll put it here. We'll also set attach and two and this is going to help us to set the <coughs> the new component that we we've added here okay so now this was also tricky because you would think you know just what i thought it was i would get this the component i would get the name and plug it in here but it doesn't work like that i'm not sure why this comp uh, this component property is apparently the name that you actually see here so it is it's actually the name of this field so what we have to do for this to work we're actually gonna so let's see here so we're actually gonna take the projectile well not like that we're gonna actually set the projectile property like that so we'll take this property and instead of it pointing it to the component that we just released and actually detach right here, we're actually pointing it to the new one, this one. Okay, so we set here like that. And now what we can do is actually just write the name here projectile like that which is yeah kind of weird but this is how it works so and uh, we just plug this in here and let's try this again so now the cable should also be connected to the weight So it is it works like it should so the only thing is yes as you can see here the the cable tangles into the base so we're gonna have to go back and actually uh, disable the collision cable collision wait uh, in the cable so be sure to take the one in the cable like this so set enable collision this one and we'll put that to false okay 
now the collision should be disabled. So let's try this continuously and see how it works because it should spawn again and launch and spawn again. Okay. So it spawned again. Let's arm it again. Went through. Sorry, it went through. That's an interesting thing. Why did it went through the this? Because it, uh, my computer went slow a little bit and actually because this had a longer speed and the time that it took the computer to calc to wait for other operations actually this moved from here to here and passed through the arm so that's well if you wanna yeah if you wanna make sure that doesn't happen just go into the arm and go and uh, check the ccd which is continuous collision detection here right here uh, actually not the arm, it's the pull arm, okay. And this one, but just uh, know that it consumes resources, okay. So don't use it often. Okay, so let's go like that. So we have it again. So if you try again, like that. So it works continuously. Now, of course, it doesn't work as it should because uh, we should put it here, okay, like that, and then launch again. You can see it goes pretty far. Now, what we could also do, so I think this is it. Um, it works as it should, I think. Uh, and what we c what we could do now is just make sure that. But yeah, we could just teleport the projectile here and put this in place right like that. But yeah, it would be complicated actually because you you would have to move everything like. So yeah, I'll leave this to you, uh, if you need it, actually, you might not need it. So, if you need, you can actually get the position of all these components, the counterweight, the arm, and the projectile, and you go, so, you move them here, into your viewport, you move them like you should have them, okay? And then you get their position from here. And if you go into the the event begin play like that, and if you uh, no sorry it's not a big uh, event begin play it should be uh, here uh, no no so if you're firing after you do all this then you move everything into place for the next. Uh, uh, well, not exactly. It's actually when arming, but yeah. So you can what you can do is just simple. You can animate them with this and see what uh, what gives you. Okay. So you just set the final position and use move component too, so they go into place. But if not, uh, this already works like this. Yeah, so maybe last th last thing that I want to show you is that if you have this have this um, projectile, as you can see now, it will uh, eject it because it's um, it's uh, colliding with the arm. What you can do at the event begin play is actually move it down so it doesn't jump. Because you cannot move this in the, con uh, uh, very important, you cannot move this in the construction script. If you do, then its uh, uh, initial position in relation to the arm, it's going to change. So you'll get that, that weird thing that we got before, where uh, 
it actually adds a distance to the, the freedom of movement that we put. So you can only do this at the begin after the game is has started because uh, that's how it calculates the position of the physics constraint. So you cannot use that in the construction script. But let's see if we can move this here. Let's see, for example, so it's, it looks more natural. So let's see. So we'll move this. This we'll take from here and we'll move this. Sorry, it didn't work actually did it um, sorry just uh, projectiles we'll take this so we'll move it here okay like that so it's gonna be minus 50 and three uh, and 500 and 30 okay so here the thing begin play that we'll take the projectile and we'll move it so set uh, local will it work I've, I've found that local uh, relative coordinates don't usually work they just they just uh, default to, to world location which is weird so uh, let's just use world so get the actor location uh, transform actually and we'll take this and we'll say uh, get world location like that so with the world because this is actor to world we're gonna inverse it uh, in inverse transform transform location like that so we'll take the world to uh, but yeah actually this is not like this it's just here so it's it was minus 20 but it's that's not right let's look again so this yeah so it was the rotation I was looking into maybe so it should be here so we shouldn't put it more um, here because the maximum of the physics constraint is 375 so so it's 440 and yeah minus 30 we'll say okay so here we put minus 30 like that and 440 what is it something like that okay so this will will say projectile set uh, uh, it's relative yes no it's world actually set world location like that because we transform from relative to the actor to world okay so set this like that so this should move it in place and not jerk as it did before so let's see well didn't quite work i think I think we messed a little bit and it probably collided with this or uh, ah no what we probably did let's see so actor to world yeah so yeah the problem is this it's not inverse it's transform uh, transform location so we, yeah sorry about that so actually transform so the actor to world we're actually actor to world we're trying to set so minus 30 is here 440 uh, like that okay sorry about that 
So that's why we see a bigger jerk there because it actually went to 000 at the of the world. Well, actually these coordinates, but of, of the world. So let's try again. So yeah, it still does that thing. It's probably because let's put this to 60 like that. And I will put this to less just to make sure that it doesn't <coughs> surpass the limit. Yeah, so it doesn't want to work. Not sure why. So get actor transform. Uh, projectile. World. Should work. Yeah, let's try again. Yeah, I'm not sure why this doesn't work, but it, but it should work. You just try it out. Um, there's something that I'm missing now. It's probably... Um, yeah. Mm, sorry about that. I It's something missing. I can't figure out right now. But you should, you should be able to do this very easily. So just take the location and, you know, just... Just put it here. I'm not sure why it does this. Uh, like that. Minus 100. Uh, well, I see. Ah, yes. It's probably because it sh this should be more, actually. Because it's off the ground. So let's say like this. So now we're sure we're not colliding and we're sure we're high enough. Okay, so. So. Yeah, sorry. So again, yeah, if you leave this here, see what happens. It just goes further away because it takes this distance also. So it just, yeah. So you should go here and put this back where it was like that. So that's why, okay, so we put this minus 120 and 500, 550, let's say here like that. So, yes, so we do get, the, 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 you know, it settles down pretty easily. It doesn't jerk like that. Okay, yeah, so no problem. So you can also do this here. Uh, when you attach it, when you attach it and it's got attached at the end of this, you can actually set its <coughs> position again. Just be careful where you set it because this can actually be in any position possible in any rotation. So just make sure you don't collide with it. Okay. But if not, just leave it there and uh, it should work. So I hope this has been useful. Um, and uh, yeah, if, if you like this video, don't. Uh, don't hesitate to comment or like it and also don't forget to subscribe